Hello YouTube! My name is Nero, and to ease some Call of Duty Advanced Warfare and another episode of DNA Saturday, which is the weekly series here on my channel, where your subscribers send me in DNA bombs. And what's going on here in this gameplay is actually a game of Uplink here on the Map Defender, running around with the ASM1 royalty, and the gameplay itself is actually being brought to you by a guy that goes by the name of Fang Ripple. And if you guys would like to find his YouTube channel, it is youtube.com slash wolfhalofilms. That once again is youtube.com slash wolfhalofilms. So this gameplay, guys, is actually a pretty intense game game of uplink for the most part because typically when you see people that are getting dna bombs while playing in uplink they're typically spawn trapping because uplink itself is kind of a spawn trappy game mode right the people's spawns are they're really kind of set in stone of course they can flip but they're definitely a lot more set in stone than say team deathmatch or kill confirmed or domination and stuff like that so you end up seeing a lot of dna bombs here from this game mode but for the most part the opposing team is actually playing super aggressively and he's actually defending for the most part here like they keep trying to get the uplink ball just completely out of their zone but they they keep bringing it right back to like right next to their goal so as a result he has to defend like crazy throughout the majority of this gameplay which i think definitely makes for some very nice objective play occasionally he does pick up the ball and typically he throws that which generally you don't see people picking up dna palms if they're actually being the guy trying to score the goals in uplink but uh, he does a pretty good job of defending it's constant just the opposing team just constantly rushing out and it's definitely a very interesting gameplay from that perspective and i think you guys will all enjoy it because of course we're running around here with the asm1 which is a gun that i have complained about about you know throughout the entirety of the advanced warfare life cycle i've complained about the asm1 in one way or another initially i complained about the asm1 because it was far too weak i complained about it because i wanted to use it i wanted to love it because it is obviously and they haven't i don't think they've actually ever come out and actually said this but it's very obvious this is designed to be a futuristic you know classic world war ii tommy gun this is designed to be a classic world war ii thompson and as a result i definitely wanted to use the gun a bunch but it was just so weak when the game first came out and the ball 27 was of course even more powerful than it is now and it just really wasn't viable it was not viable to use like really any submachine gun then they of course brought out the big smg patch where they buffed up a lot of submachine guns the asm1 included and then suddenly the asm1 was almost a little bit too good in my opinion i thought it was like one of the best guns ever when i started using it so initially i loved it but as time went on more and more people they just continued to use the asm1 more and more people kind of caught on to old nero's running around the asm1 a whole bunch let me try that out and then, of course they started using it and by no means am i trying to say i guess i came out wrong it almost made it sound like i'm like the re person responsible for making the asm1 popular but no i was just using it you know since the game released and at, as the game got older and older more people started catching on to the asm1 how powerful it really was and then suddenly it's like the most overused gun in advanced warfare so uh throughout the entirety of the advanced warfare life cycle i've been complaining about this gun one that was too weak and now that's far too powerful it's just a weird little thing that happened here in advanced warfare with these submachine guns right they never seem to find like a perfect balance for a lot of the submachine guns but i guess that's to be expected of a game that has so many weapons it's definitely hard to balance things and what is your perception of balance i think my perception of balance is different than your perception of balance and your perception of balance is different than the sledgehammer team's perception of balance i think every single person on the sledgehammer team that's responsible for balancing the weapons i'm sure they all have a different definition of balance and what weapons are too powerful what weapons are not powerful enough what weapons are balanced you know it just it's it's a never-ending debate that's kind of the thing of it and you kind of have to expect that in any video game any first person shooter any game that's competitive that there is going to be things that are more powerful than some other stuff it's just by the very nature of it everything has to every game has to have something that's a bit more powerful than the rest of it otherwise everything is literally the same like i don't think advanced warfare would be very fun whatsoever if every single weapon performed exactly the same like imagine if every gun just performed exactly the same as the other gun but it just had a different skin put on top of it like that wouldn't be that fun i don't think that, that, that would be kind of similar to some other games that we've seen in the video games industry where they have a very limited number of weapons uh, titanfall is an example i bring up a lot is a game that barely had any weapons in it whatsoever and so as a result there wasn't a lot of variety there and if every weapon performed the same there wouldn't be any variety whatsoever so that would just be boring right so it's fun that every gun in advanced warfare feels different although some of the ones they brought in later on uh, as dlc weapons uh, free dlc weapons keep mind uh those weapons are kind of just reskins of other weapons but it's still nice that uh they have a wide variety of weapons and a wide variety of guns that perform differently here in advanced warfare which i definitely would say is one of
of the one of the more favorable things about Advanced Warfare is the wide variety of weapons they've added to the game and the wide variety of types of weapons they've added to the game, like laser weapons and weapons like the M1 that don't consume ammo. And you know, uh, instead of just having like a normal pump action shotgun, let's add Attack 19, which is a directed energy shotgun, or let's make a submachine gun. You know, instead of just like your standard tropes in Call of Duty, like a submachine gun that's high damage, low fire rate, or low damage, high fire rate. Instead of just having that stuff, they definitely tried to think outside the box in terms of the weapon creation, which I think was definitely one of the big pluses for Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. But the gameplay itself is actually going to be wrapping up here relatively soon. So let's go ahead and talk about this ASM1 Royalty class stuff just a little bit here before the end of the video. So we're using the ASM1 Royalty, which of course is a fantastic variant of the ASM1. It's essentially, if you guys weren't aware, it's essentially just the ASM1 Speakeasy, which most people consider to be the best variant of the ASM1. It's basically just the Speakeasy, but it also has an increase to its normal like starting ammo. Like the maximum ammo that can have it actually has an increase to that to, to its reserve ammo just because the, by the very nature that's a royalty weapon. So when they add royalty weapons into Advanced Warfare, they didn't only just want to make them have a purple skin, they also made it so they have some slight other benefits. Like some of them reload slightly faster, or some of them have a little bit of extra reserve ammo, and the ESM1 is one of the ones that has a bit of extra reserve ammo. So in terms of attachments, he's got extended mags because that's on there by default. He has four grip, the reduced recoil, as well as he has advanced rifling. So he's not using a silencer or anything like that. He's basically going loud, and the advanced rifling on the ASM1 just makes the weapon so ridiculously good. Like, it's already pretty good, but once you get the advanced rifling on there and you get that increased range, that increased power, that distance, it is so freaking fantastic. In terms of perks, very basic perks, guys. Super basic. He's got low profile perk 1, blind eye perk 2, and then for perk 3, he's got a combination of blast suppressor as well as scavenger. And right there is actually where we end up picking up the DNA bomb. So it's a very basic setup in terms of perks, which I've talked about in a number of episodes of DNA Saturday. The perks in Advanced Warfare, there's just not a lot of variety to them. Like, you don't see people running, like, ridiculously weird classes or anything like that, where the perks are definitely, like, a lot different than anyone else's perks. Everybody runs just about the same perks. And uh, I definitely think that's uh, kind of the result of uh, kind of bad perk management by by the part of Sledgehammer. Like, we said earlier how great it is, how they made, like, all the changes to the weapons and how there's a nice variety of weapons. But I feel as though the perks are just not put in the right spots. Like, all the great perks are in Perk 3. Perk 1, nobody picks anything besides low profile, except for occasionally, like, Lightweight. In Perk 2, nobody typically picks anything besides Blind Eye except for occasionally peripherals. Like, it just there's not a lot of variety of perks and therefore a lot of people's classes are pretty much the same but regardless ladies and gentlemen there we go we see the final score 65 kills along with four deaths in a game of uplink that ended up actually being uh very close he had 18 to 16 there so it's definitely a very close game and him while he didn't score any uplinks while our guy fangripple here didn't score any uplinks he did pick up 65 kills and was a big reason why the opposing team wasn't able to just kind of run away with the score we saw there during the first half just how aggressive they were trying to get towards Bang Ripple School. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you guys all enjoyed this episode of DNA Saturday. And if you did, remember to leave a rating where you guys feel the deserves. If you guys would like to go ahead and check out Mr. Fang Ripple, you can do so by finding him over at youtube.com slash wolfhalofilms or by clicking the notation on your screen or by clicking the link to his YouTube channel at the very top of the video description. He is a Call of Duty channel. And he posts up Call of Duty gameplay among his Call of Duty gameplay. He has a 75 kill game in Black Ops 3 because he did post up a lot of videos during the Black Ops 3 beta. And more recently, he's starting to post up some different kinds of DNA bombs here in Advanced Warfare. His number of videos has actually dwindled over the past couple of months or so. He's definitely not like a super active YouTuber. When he does post up stuff, it's typically going to be either with a really cool weapon, like he has a lot of like royalty weapon showcases, and aside from that, he also posts up DNA bombs and he just footage of the Black Ops 3 beta and things like that. So if you guys would go ahead and check out his YouTube channel, once again, that is youtube.com slash wolfhalofilms. If you would like to learn how to submit your DNA bombs for next week's episodes of DNA Saturday, there's a video on your screen right now that you can actually find by clicking the annotation that's on your screen or by clicking the link at the very bottom of the video description, both of which will take you over to a video that I posted up a very long time ago that will teach you everything you'll ever want to know about submitting your stuff for DNA Saturday, including how to submit, where to submit, specific things I'm looking for, and things of that nature. So if you're at all interested in trying to be featured on DNA Saturday before the end of the series, go ahead and check out that video. It will teach you everything you would ever want to know about how to possibly submit your stuff for DNA Saturday. I hope you guys all enjoyed the video. Remember to leave a rating and I hope you guys all have a wonderful day.